Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. In this episode what I would like to do is I would like to review something that it's taken me quite a while to review. And I've got everything set up to review it and show you what it is. But basically it's the Fantastic Owl 2 calendar. I've been using Sunrise for quite a while now and I spent one solid week using Fantastic Owl. And I want to give you my thoughts and opinions of what I think so far. And what kind of value it added or didn't add. But I just wanted to thank you guys recently for uh, you know, helping me reach the 800 plus mark on YouTube. I'm growing my content, so if you can share it out to anyone, I would really, really appreciate it. So thanks very much, everyone. Make sure to have a great week and keep productive and enjoy the review. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another review of a calendar application. And what I'm doing in this review is I'm essentially going over the features of the calendar Fantastic L2. And this is available on iPhone and iPad. And essentially what this is, is it's, again, another calendar client uh, for anyone that's using any Google, Apple, iCal services, or even Microsoft Exchange services too. But what this does is it essentially puts on a very pretty mask. What I did is I solidly used it for one whole week. And I want to give you my thoughts and opinions. Straight away, the design was something that I'd come across before in other applications when using it, but it came out as one of the high quality features of this application. Obviously, um, as you can see, they've taken a lot of time uh, to develop the kind of uh, flow that they have here, um, going through your kind of timeline for the day, uh, and that's really, really interesting. They've done a really great design with the kind of upper red and lower black. I like that, and you get to see kind of um, your next couple of days, and and ongoing as well. So it doesn't have to be a specific week um, or month, which is great. And you can even scroll through here, which is even faster. So that's really, really useful. Um, and I like the design. I had nothing wrong with the design specifically. Uh, one note was that I, I'm not specifically this kind of person. I'm not the person that likes to see a kind of dark lower body um, and a white upper body. It kind of distracts me. It makes me feel that this is not complete or, or not finished for some reason. Anyway, uh, what I liked about this is the kind of gestures as well. So what you can do is you can drag down and get a full view of your calendar. Once you drag, oh, once you drag down again, you can see that kind of uh, timeline view. And if you tap this one, you can go straight back to the date. So for example, if I've like powered ahead to October, I can tap that and go straight back to the date. Up here, I can add uh, events, which is pretty useful. Um, and all along here, obviously, you can see one, your reminders, and two, your events, which is really, really great. What I kind of found was incredibly useful was actually going into the settings menu. And a lot of people don't do that with calendar applications, and I definitely think you should. Because what happened uh, is I, I went through uh, when I first downloaded the application and almost applied all of the fantastic settings that they have available. Uh, and they can even, uh, you know, you can even change the I app icon badge. You can change what calendars get added specifically to it. Uh, you can highlight weekends, have a light theme. So specifically, uh, you know, this makes it look lots better uh, when it comes to the user experience. Down here, you can add new events. You can have the duration, default alerts, things like that. Your default calendar too. Down here, which is pretty useful, is having reminders. I tend to take reminders off because I find reminders are more like tasks. So they didn't pop up for a reason. But obviously, you could embed your reminders on iOS into your Fantastic How To app. Another thing here is you can change what calendar, you know, what start date and, you know, what weeks come up. You can have a empty. You can show all the empty days that you've got nothing on, um, which is pretty useful as well. Lists and also advanced features when it comes to kind of numeric uh, keyboards, event location. You know, adding specific things to specific days, which is pretty handy, and notifications down at the bottom. So overall, the kind of functionality of this application became really, really valuable because I could kind of moderate or change ninety percent of what I have on the application, which is pretty handy. But overall, the reason why I'm not using this, and I actually had to re-download this app to do this review, is I found it's not, I don't know, there's something about it that's not very user-friendly. One feature that I have to say is one of my favorite features is this feature. And what you simply do is when you create a new event, what you can do is you can say, you know, uh, lunch with Paul, um, that's meant to say Paul, lunch, lunch with Paul at 2 p.m. tomorrow. 
uh, for one hour. And essentially what this does is it's a very clever feature. It is in the same technology that is built with intelligent input on the Todoist application. And what it does is it takes all of the key information and plots it into your calendar straight away as a feature, which is fantastic. So I could go to tomorrow and I could see, you know, uh, where, where am I? Uh, tomorrow was Wednesday. I've got a lunch, uh, sorry, I've got a lunch with Paul that day and it's already embedded that perfectly to what I mentioned so that became pretty handy but I never was actually inputting I think it's because I'm more using on the web that I wasn't using this feature as much it's something that people might enjoy for the experience my opinions are that I wouldn't use this camera going forward based on it's not exactly my kind of feel calendar. I, f I see where the value is with people because you can kind of scroll ahead and stuff, but I don't think it has enough colors involved. I don't think the user interface is that good to warrant me using it daily. So I'm going to continue using Sunrise and kind of Apple Calendar Blender together. So that will be my opinion. It's, uh, you can subscribe somewhere here and uh, I hope you have a great day and uh, make sure to keep productive. So I'll go see you soon, guys. Thank you.